Right guys, we're back with episode number 19 of the Edge podcast. We've got Jed with us today. So he's 17 years old, reseller, and has done some software development for us. Got a great story and gonna be a lot of like a lot to learn, especially for the younger people who don't want to go and work in Tesco, Sainsbury's, do your, your normal sort of entry level jobs. You've quit one of them up those yep. already, haven't you? Yeah, uh, when I was quit my uh cafe job. So And uh, just reselling full time. Yeah, exactly. Made so much more doing it. So let's go from the start. Where where did you sort of get into reselling and what, what where are you at right now? Uh, so I started two, three years ago now. Um, I'd always sort of known I want to run my own business, um, like not worth other people. And I was sort of doing what I think a lot of people do now, sort of browsing YouTube, like ways to make money. Yeah, yeah. And I came across this guy in America yeah. who sort of tried flipping sneakers. Um, so going to the outlets, yeah, yeah. And then selling the stock X that I right after. We sort of got into it. And then I found, oh, I thought this was pretty cool. I like shoes. So I um, saw then two other YouTubers sort of in the actual reselling space. Um, in the UK? Yeah. So yeah. So the Lucky Bosser was sort of yep. my main person. So I yep. saw Flipping Supreme. That was yep. sort of the big thing. So we always talk at school how much it's worth. So I sort of, from then, from then on, yeah, I just sort of got into it, joined my first group. So what are you doing now? You're at, you're at uh, six film. So I'm six film year thirteen. Yeah, uh, A levels this year. But, um, and what are you what are you studying? So I'm studying business, economics, and computer science. Yes. So, and the computer science is where it's lent lent itself well to you writing software for us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. A few, so what have you developed? So the first thing I've ever developed was like a Chrome extension for Audi. Yep. So back. 2021 i think it was yeah what were the main products that were in Aldi? so start? it was um, there was the squishmallows that, that i think this is even before, before that them. so this was um patio heaters that was it oh god, so, um, god. i like, hot tubs. forgot about all that. That, that i think that was sort of my main money maker yeah. and i we sort of worked out that there's no key for the site yeah but it's whoever adds to cart first because there's yep. like a 50 minute cart hold so chrome extension as soon as the page goes on it tries to add to cart and it just yeah it did very well Ab- absolute numbers yeah it's, yeah did you use it personally or did you sell that? Um, both. So I used it for myself and then I sold it to sort of other groups. Groups, yeah. Um, which sort of, did really well. Yeah, because I know no one else is going to sort of take the sort of numbers that we are. Yeah, so. yeah. And was was yours like one of the first? Um, it was the first, I think, extension I'd seen yeah. um, for I knew like, there are other Chrome extensions yeah, yeah. like sneakers, but the Audi first was still. Reality. First was very, it, yeah, Audi was very new to it. Yeah so that's yeah how did you actually get started with like deciding to code stuff for uh, the sneaker realm so um that was my first experience i think it was um did you decide to make it on your own or did someone request it i it was requested for me but because i was sort of talking about how i've sort of i know how to code and so yeah. i need i want to find things to sort of do to make yeah, money yeah. And this guy was like all right could you make us this uh yeah. this script which is quite easy to make it's, it's you no know, protection on the site yeah and that's sort of where I think my sort of passion for it sort of yeah, kicked yeah. in, really. And you've seen what you can do. What, what, what have you done since? So I've made a few, I made a bot for Beerwolf. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. It didn't do that well because sort of it worked in testing and then as soon as they released it, they changed stuff. So oh, okay. uh, that sort of failed. Um, I created my own sort of toolbox, yeah. um, sort of for like raffles and stuff, um, mainly for friends. And now I've got, a tool called Polar Automations because I used to be, well, Discord used to be Polar Orb, yeah. um, and uh, basically it tracks parcels for you because yeah. I had loads of parcels I didn't know what was happening really. Yeah, yeah, so many different careers. So you sort of enter the tracking number in, and then it will keep checking the site until there's an update and sends a webhook to you. Got it, got it, got it. So you can stay on top of everything. So for someone that's, if someone's hit like hitting heavy numbers and they're doing hundreds of parcels on a release, yeah, then that's it. That sort of where people came to it from because yeah, they're yeah. like i've mainly like they're like i've hit 50 pairs yeah to different addresses like I, I need to work out what's been returned to sender what's been out for delivery and stuff so um that's sort of where where it came from yeah and what have you done like have you so on on the back of like your reselling you've you've done the the software side of it but what what do you do reselling wise so at the moment i focus mainly on brick flips and sort um, of ticket reselling Brick flips for people that don't know explain what that is so it's sort of 
most people sort of know about the Travis Scott shoes that are really hard to get, but you can actually make more money, I'd say, off bricks where basically these shoes sit in stock. Yep. Um, they're really easy to buy. They don't care about multiples most of the time. Yep. But it's more of a volume game. Yep. So um, you could normally buy 20, 30 pairs, maybe five, 10 pound profit each. And that sort of adds up quite quickly. Why do you think so many people are against brick flips? Because like for me, that makes complete sense because it's easy to purchase and you can sort of do like big volumes and numbers with it but so many people just won't even look at them they i think it's people are scared yeah. like they see online all these like pandas they resell for loads i can make 100 pound a pair whereas why would i want to get something that's only five pound profit yeah, or something yeah. but they don't sort of realize that the more you buy yeah. that's how it sort of scales like i'm making quite a bit a month from just doing this and what i think as well is like the, the mad thing is is that like let's say it is like 10 pound profit prepare and people will turn their nose up at that but they'd work 10 pound an hour but oh, all yeah. you've got to do to increase the volume is click quantity up yeah exactly and then and then you've just like replicated hours and hours of work like I, this because there's no sort of cost yeah like, yeah like people would happily spend hundreds of pounds on bots yeah a month proxies and stuff where you're not guaranteed to hit anything yeah. like i've done that before that sort of has um sort of affected me yeah. um whereas now i can just takes 10 minutes to do to buy these things that i see it's yeah. profitable um and so it's just so much easier really. and so what sort of numbers are you doing with brick flips in terms of how many pairs are you getting um, are you actively doing it so sort of at my peak i was maybe doing 40 50 pairs a week which yeah. um it's sort of quite a lot sort of when you're yeah. doing it at your house um, yeah, yeah parents didn't get didn't yeah, like yeah, all yeah. the all the deliveries um but it, i could have scaled it so much easier so much more but i just sort of was limited by what I was allowed to do yeah because yeah. um, i didn't want to it because it does it is time consuming packaging up individual orders yeah, for yeah. Like alias or stock x that can take about hours so and so you have also uh ditch your tome with amazon as well haven't you yes so I did have. you find amazon better suited because you weren't doing individual orders to individual it's, yes if you've got the the capital to start it's yeah. it's by far the best thing yeah. you can do um like when i was sort of doing it mainly i Although I wasn't making that much, I didn't put too much into it at the start. Yeah. Um, the just it was just so easy to do. Yeah, it's a simple process. Isn't yeah, it? I like, think a lot of people, a lot of people like um, really overcomplicating the brain before starting it, and then can't oh, yeah. wrap their head around that it actually is a, a pretty seamless process once you've done it. A few I times. was, although this isn't the class at Amazon, I was effectively drop shipping on it. Yes, yeah. So um, back in summer twenty twenty one, these barbecues at Tesco, forty quid. Um, but like in stock everywhere. I got a mate who worked at Tesco's to check it. So my local had like 40 barbecues in it. Yep. Uh, but they were selling on Amazon for 90, yeah, even yeah. with Tesco yeah, yeah. branding on it. But as soon as I got an order, I would just pop down to Tesco. So was you doing FBM? So that was FBM, yeah. Um, it was good because of how, well, just that product was so good. Yeah, yeah. But I did have a few cases where people said, oh, they didn't, uh, basically they uh, refunded me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they didn't turn up or something, which just, such a hassle doing it myself trying to do a to z claims yeah, yeah. whereas then if it's actually fba it's so yeah, much, you, you so much easier, yeah. that, don't you? so um with reselling <clears throat> you've done you've you basically you've coded your own software but you've used bots as well yeah so what how like walk me through where you started and sort of what experience you've got from buying. so in my first so i'd always seen bossing look so easy online lucky yeah, yeah. boss are hitting or like boss are going over hitting 30 pairs just by clicking a few buttons yeah. and that sort of um clickbaited me into it yeah so my first bot was kicks raffle bot which was yeah. a raffle bot which i sort of knew nothing about the time i had one card one yeah. address um so that was a waste of money yeah yeah but it's nothing that the bots felt it's just i didn't know what i was getting myself into yeah, yeah and then i think my next one was carnage i want to say yeah um i bought that at the peak Carn yeah carnage was absolutely destroyed oh, for ps5 so and good yeah it was killing on a game wasn't it and i used it a lot for um for slots so yeah. i would run slots of people um for audi mainly yeah uh, and that sort of made a good amount and then i went into more sneakers again so like i think i got flair yeah i had cyber burst torn um so you've been through pretty much all of them yeah most of the not at the peaks like i couldn't yeah, afford yeah. seven grand for a bot but um i've been through quite a few yeah. And what sort of, what's your standpoint with them now? Are you actively using them or? Not really. So the only bot I currently own is Torn. Yeah. That's because I got a basic key back when it first released. Yeah, like 15 yeah. Quid. We, um, e, e was, um, came from Aftermarket. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The guy who owns it. Um, so um, I don't buy any more. I just don't have the time for it. Yeah. Plus the costs, I would keep sort of realizing I'm spending too much time and money on it because yeah. I would, like Kith, they would drop once a day. Not once a day, but like they would drop at one point in the day. You yeah. don't know when. And I would just sit on my laptop all day. I'm just like, I can't go out of the house. I've yeah, got to wait yeah, for this. I wait in that just sort of screwed my social life a bit. Yeah, my parents yeah. are like, why are you spending all your time here yeah. doing this? Yeah, yeah. So I just realized that there's better ways. Amazon, brick flips, it's just so much easier. And yeah, can, more time efficient. I can work a few hours a week, make even more money. Yeah, for yeah. It. So what, um, but when you were botting, what's, what's the biggest sort of numbers you've done? Um, so it was, I think my biggest hit um, on the single drop was End. Yep. Um, that was Raffles, that was the Onyx slides. Yep. Back in July, I think it was. Um, I hit about 20 pairs. And so what, what sort of profit did you offer? Um, unfortunately, I could have hit about 60, but I took funds out because I was like, oh, I'm scared these are going to brick. Yeah, yeah. Which is annoying, but I think I made a few hundred off that. Nice, nice Which nice. is pretty good. But it sort of shows that I could have hit 60. It could have been yeah, a, a lot nicer. A lot yeah, uh, and then I think my biggest single drop was reverse mocker, Travis Lowe's. Yeah, yeah. So that was an end. I only hit one pair because um, stock was quite low and end, I think, for that. But that made me, I think, 700 quid. And how much did it cost you to actually get your entries in? So um, this, I was using a bot called Soul AIO, yeah, yeah. which I, I'm not sure how many people know about this, but at the time it was sort of a dead bot. No one used it, but it still somehow managed to get entries in on shape on a end because it's such a hard site to, uh, yeah. to bot. Uh, so I rented it off a guy for a week for Fiverr. Yeah. Didn't need to buy any proxies or anything. And I think on total it cost me about 15 quid to, uh, to run. So, to, so like 15 quid plus your initial capital for the shoe and then you've returned 700 in profit. Yeah, it's ridiculous really. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, if I had more time, I would have got more entries in, probably would yeah. hit more pairs, but I'll sleep one pair. How many entries did you have to get in? I think I did about 2,000. 2,000 for which one pair. Which is ridiculous. I think that's what a lot of people underestimate, aren't they? So for end, most sites you don't need that many. Yep. Like Nike, you can get 10 entries and still hit a couple pairs. Yeah. But for, for end, it's all about how many entries you get in. And I had quite a low-key card provider, which was quite... Um, which card provider that was that? was Stripe, which I... Uh, we were we was talking about that earlier, so you've yeah. also developed some software around that. So you? So you want to tell I was that? quite early on to Stripe. Yeah. So I had a mate who was like quite big into raffles, was like, could you make this, yeah. this generator for, uh, to get loads of cards? So he did that to do it manually, which was like hours to do. Yeah. It took me about five minutes to make, so I gave it to him. And then I realized that other people are like, oh, I need this as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I was the only person I knew of at the time that had a generator for it. I was sending about 150 to 200 pounds just for this software. Yeah, yeah. I thought like five, six people. Nice. That's like an easy like, thousand pounds. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and it wasn't a lot of work. It was like five minutes, which is ridiculous. Uh, unfortunately now, Stripe sort of, everyone knows about it. Every yeah. toolbox has a generator, but yeah. Yeah, it is what, what it is. What you, you got in early. I got in early, yeah. Yeah, which, yeah. It was quite beneficial. Do you think you could have took that bigger? Um, possibly, yeah. I've always been a bit sort of stingy on how much I charge. I don't want, I don't like feeling like I scam people. Yeah. Um, so I often do work sort of under market price yeah, yeah. just because it's experience as well and I sort of enjoy it. Um, but I think if I'd pushed it more, I could have got a lot more people. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't want to like feel like I'm clipping the loop and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. telling people about this provider that they didn't really know about. Yeah, yeah. And get that with the um, the generator that you made what was your route to market um well it was word of mouth really okay so um i had so a couple, no advertising no advertising it was just people would refer them i said like if you if you got someone that wants it i'll give you 15 quid yeah if yeah. i if i close the deal which i think a couple of people took yeah, yeah um but i didn't because it was so low key i didn't want to sort of out it mm -hmm. and sort of be like sort of public enemy number one in yeah, the, yeah. the reselling space so um, people just DM me saying, like, can I buy it off you? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was sort of how it was. How it worked. And what, like, off the back of, like, if we look at what the reselling market, because we think this is, like, a pretty interesting time right now. Yeah, it's... Air yeah. fryers, obviously, we're churning. PS5s are starting to, well, they've no, died. They, they, yeah. They're gone. Air fryers are pretty much gone. You can still make money on them here yeah. and there, but it's not big. I think we're going to enter a bit of, like, a, a dry spell. Yeah, I've and, noticed that. Yeah, and but I don't... Like anyone who's been in the game long enough, like knows it com it comes in waves. Like it's always cycles and it always has yeah. Been it's always. I think people are getting scared now because it's not shoes. Yeah, yeah. Because shoes have died out. Like pandas yeah. are like, although they've reached loads, but yeah, pandas dying is yeah, yeah. showing it. Um, 
but people sort of need to work out that they need to diversify yeah i i'm i don't do that many shoes anymore yep. I, I it's my favorite thing to do i love them um but it's you got to move on now so what 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 do you think like what are you going to put your time and effort into going forward um so hopefully amazon soon uh, i've yep. had a few issues with my account so um, yeah, yeah. but hopefully once that's fixed because i think that's got the most potential yep. especially for scaling because sneakers you can't really shoes, yeah, yeah. you can't really scale that you can but not easily yeah yeah uh, and then tickets as yep. well is quite a, quite a new thing, thing. yeah so tickets is something that like um I'm, even though like tickets have always resold and always will they've, up until very recently they've sort of not let's say the last 12 months they've yeah. not really been wide while widely advertised by like groups like us um yeah i feel like they've been like quite low-key and no one's really dipped the tone with them but we're now starting to see it like we provide it in aftermarket and we had people do like ridiculous numbers we had oh, a yeah. guy do four grand profit off the cold play tickets yeah. like in a day like and that's the thing like it's something that can't be done and what with the uh, ticket side of it there's consistency there's always going to be a concert and event. yeah exactly there's always something um and more and more people need to start looking at that as an opportunity in my opinion but what give us your experience with tickets so far so my first tickets i bought oh, were central c that yep. was the first call i saw that i decided i want to go for i made like 60 quid loss on it um, oh really yeah because they're sat in sort of ages right. just weren't reselling um so that sort of was a bit of a blow and then ricky gervais yeah so he um did quite a few concerts so i made i think 50 60 quid off him yeah um and then my big money maker was peter k yeah yeah so um i think it was about a month the show yeah uh i got the tickets i got to say four tickets about 300 i want to say maybe yeah. a bit more but bought them like 10 o'clock in the morning yeah within the hour i sold them for 1200 yeah, yeah so it's nice. like ridiculous just how much you can nice, do nice, from nice. it and what sort of the limit in fact to, to you getting more tickets um cash flow is the main issue because you can have like events like madonna's just happen yep. but that's not until october yeah, yeah and these sites unless you sell privately they don't pay you out till after the event yep and i don't have like if i had a credit card it'd probably be a bit different story yeah, yeah once you sort of get in the cycle there's always constant money coming in yeah but i don't you, want to tie up my money when you, and when you start there's there's going to be a back like a delay yeah isn't there? i think there's probably six months maybe until you're going to start really seeing yeah, how yeah. much you can make from it um but Unless that's it's that's like yeah like piece of k like the events have already they've been running yeah. haven't they so like that's yeah. that could so mine was around. mine i'm lucky i got i think i bought them mid-november yeah. and the concert the, the event was like 16th of december yeah okay that's about like a month to wait for 1200 quid yeah yeah and um which is obviously not bad yeah, yeah of course Course. they're only like 300 quid tied up into it yeah and how are you sort of going about acquiring tickets what are you doing so um the main way is bots um although i know they're quite frowned upon it's a bit of a gray area yeah um they're only key bots so the site uses a thing called queue it yeah um basically basically people see and they put you in a queue and then once you get through the queue you can add to cart mm -hmm. but what you can do is um these bots will um enter thousands of times for you so it's like effectively like 2000 people in the queue for you as soon as one goes through it then brings you through to the page which is what i used um okay. i don't buy too many i would stick to the limit that the um like the event says so max six tickets i'll only get six i yeah. don't want to risk going too right. much over that and getting cancelled yeah well, you you can do it it's it's fine but i just want to also limit just i don't want to tie up too much money yeah because yeah. it's probably the riskiest sort of part of free selling i'd yeah, say yeah yeah because there's no you like like you, said, you, you lost 60 quid it's not like you um you're returning it yeah that's, that's the good thing about yeah. shoes that you can always return stuff like yeah, i return yeah. bricks all the time just yeah, yeah. they don't sell that's not a big issue yeah, whereas yeah. these can be they don't sell so you've you mentioned tickets reselling yeah. botting you've also done the the software side of stuff what are you looking at going forward what, what do you want to do you want to still cast it out wide do a bit of everything or is there something you want to focus on so i think long term my goal is fba yeah because i've seen the success in that yeah, aftermarket yeah. like how much you can make yeah even alongside a job yeah um and then how much you can make if you're doing it full time yeah um i'm not thinking of uni i uh, just why don't. not um i've never really like at school i've never been too i don't enjoy lessons really yeah, yeah. i don't like that style of learning um i quite like hands-on work yeah 
Um, so when I'm coding stuff, that's all very hands-on. Yep. So I learn as I go and that's sort of what I want to do. And it's quite a flexible career path really. Yeah. Um, which is sort of what I want to do. So what about, did you, because before this you mentioned like apprenticeships to me and is that yeah. because of the hands-on aspect? Um, yeah, it's also the fact that I'm learning, I'm earning whilst yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. So, um, is this, so if you're going into apprenticeships, you want to go into the software side? Software, so? yeah. Um, that is just sort of what my passion has yeah. been really. And it's, well, it makes good money as well. So. Is there a particular field of that you'd want to go into or are you, are you sort of more, well, would you say you're more money motivated? into you'd work anywhere in software or is there something in particular um, that you actually want to work in it's sort of i think more about the lifestyle like the money obviously it would be nice but i don't think i would like make that my sole purpose i want to yeah. i'd quite like to move abroad yeah. you know in the future um but sort of i'm quite open to anything at the moment whatever yeah. sort of i feel like how come is there a reason that you don't take the sort of let's say the sneaker side of it more seriously um in terms of bot uh, uh, not botting like software development on that side or all like in the reselling space in general whether that be developing um a ton of monitors developing um a bot what is there a reason why you've not gone that route there's a couple well the first is probably skill like yeah. some of the developers in this space are like are just insane yeah like what they can do i'm just not on that level yeah um so i'm, I'm only young i haven't got the sort of experience they have and also there's quite a lot of pressure to I think I can't remember where it was, but um, I was speaking to a developer and it's just, it takes such a toll on you. Yeah, yeah. Like if users aren't hitting, they're going to go all out on you. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. just don't have the time as well to, to constantly yeah. push when updates. We, when we had Ewan on, uh, the Splash Force developer, um, if you've not seen that podcast, go back and watch it. Um, so that was, uh, Splash Force was one of the best bots in his yeah, day. Yeah, I remember that. And, but he was saying on the pod, like his mental health like was ruined and like he would be up all night. He would be like, um, like paranoid like shaking on a drop because like the backlash you get from people because oh, uh, I think yeah. and I remember seeing it when, when we first started it was even before like botting became so well like before bots started springing up everywhere yeah. and like anyone was churning out a bot for anything when it was only still the, the big main core bots people would like back then but probably like seven years ago there would be people that were like developers literally saying like they were suicidal because like they'd be putting so much in work in something and then if like let's say the Sounds, site changes yeah. on the last like minute before the drop um they can't do anything about it and then they've got thousands of people giving them shit online yeah like although it's the developers do make a lot of money yeah um because obviously they, they deserve it but um it's just too much yeah live i've got school i've got a social life to sort yeah. of deal with i can't be spending all day yeah. inside waiting and sit checking for what's changed and stuff and even like the other stuff I do, if it doesn't work, it does. Like yeah. I get really annoyed at myself for it. Yeah, I yeah. take it quite personally. If it's even if it's sort of out of my control, it yeah, yeah. it does get to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, as well, while we're on this now, so you've developed some software for us. Yeah, yeah. And it's been a great feature. Um, we've had we've seen a ton of success from it. It was on the stories yesterday. Um, people have even been. Did you see people have been reselling some of the stuff on eBay? Have they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, been, it's been picking up items. Someone made. Someone bought a watch yesterday. It was a 300 quid price drop. So it was from 568 to 268. That's and insane. then he sold it on eBay for 400 and something. He made 175 quid profit or something that's, like that's that. That's mental. Um, but yeah, like it was, um, it's, it's been doing really, really well. Do you want to explain to people what that is, how it works? So it's, um, so it's for Amazon. So a lot, one thing that people do is they resell from Amazon to Amazon. So they would just like find a deal. Um, and if it's like a big sale, they'll buy it, wait for the sale to go, and then they'll sell it at the normal price and yep. make, and obviously keep the difference. So this effectively scans all the deals in Amazon when it finds a deal that matches the criteria to make sure it actually does sell well. Yep. It will then notify the users and they can go buy it very easily from Amazon, wait a week or two and then yeah, send yeah. it back in. And that's like one of the, the, the maddest things and that, that this is something that I actually love because like no one, expects that you can buy from amazon and then resell back i, from I was amazon. blown away when i saw people yeah, yeah. doing that and I, pretty much every product that does it you, you're going to get a uh, good profit and it's normally good sellers as well like they're normally quite uh, fast oh, yeah, sellers. Yeah, yeah. it's like a massive and it's obviously there's, there's certain things that you've got to do you've got to purchase the items in certain ways so that your account doesn't get banned yeah but if you do it right like it's a good earner oh yeah definitely and so you've done that for us yeah i had someone um, ask me about the monitor um and sort of say how how easy is it to run how easy is it to build now i've 
hold my hands up, no experience in coding yeah. whatsoever. What goes into something like that? So um, luckily, it's quite simple yep. because we, uh, if you do Amazon, you'll know what Keeper is. So they yep. track all the price stuff. So they, um, I think people doing it manually before, they yep. would check the Keeper deals page. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've got, basically I'm scraping that yep. um, and then I'm checking it against criteria to see yep. if the sales rank, uh, how many price drops it's had because that yep. can sort of indicate actually how much it's going to sell for. Yep. Um, and then if it matches all of that, then you send it off. And it's it's quite to... easy to run, really. Yeah. And it was how long did it take to build? Probably like a day. Yeah, because I remember when when I, I spoke to you about it, like I was yeah. thinking like it was going to be a few weeks or something. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, I'll probably have it done like maybe by the end of tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, that's one of the more easier things yeah. in the scene. It can get a lot more complicated than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's especially when the sites don't want you to be scraping their data. Yeah. That's when they are. Uh, is there anything that you would build, look to build, or it, it, this might be, this is actually something that could be interesting for us. Is there anything that could possibly work where you would, because I know some of the monitors have like, um, you can have Amazon sort of like extension that's auto checkout. Was that, is that something that you feel like you could do? Um, you could implement onto there to speed. So auto speed? checkout I've always been quite funny with because that's the difficult part yeah. of sort of this industry um, because it, takes a lot of time and all the changes and stuff um but i don't think sort of for amazon especially with this is although it does sell out fast it's normally quite safe it's not down to the milliseconds like nike and uh Foot Locker and stuff are yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit easier i'd yeah. say so i've i've looked at stuff like that before but i've sort of stayed away, stayed away yeah. yeah 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 so you sort of you've done all of this you've already left your job you just do reselling now yeah but do you ever see yourself going back into a nine to five i think yeah definitely um only because i find it quite passionate i'd always love to work for myself yeah. like if i had a startup idea even outside of in like reselling yeah. i would definitely pursue it because i've i love working for myself um and just the flexibility it gives you but i'm not going to rule out a it's a normal nine to five yeah um, but as long as it's sort of i enjoy what i do that's sort of all i really care about yeah yeah and Degree apprenticeship is the, the route for that? Oh, uh, is it degree apprenticeship? So apprenticeship both at? really. Yeah. Uh, degree takes longer um, and you do obviously do get a degree out of it, but I don't think in this sort of industry it matters about the degree or not. It's more your experience. Yeah, yeah. I'm building up experience now. So yeah. that's sort of... And so you've been, a lot of the stuff you've done because like you implemented um, a toolbox with us, didn't you? And you said it was just for your portfolio. Yeah. So have you got, is that something that you're just looking to actively expand just to for uh, yeah, job so, otherwise? So that's, yeah. Um, I've never really wanted to, I've obviously, I've always wanted to have like my own products. Yeah. But I don't care too much about that. Like yeah. I'm fine with what I'm doing. Um, it's obviously, it's good experience. It looks good on my CV, my portfolio. But I don't really see myself making too much stuff at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to some uh, general reselling stuff. Yeah why why is reselling in your opinion like the perfect thing because we get people but one of our this is actually quite funny actually because i don't i made a tiktok video say that if you're 17 years old this is what you need to do yeah um, because that was around the age that i started now we get probably at least three dms a day uh, maybe more just coming from that video and they all say like hi i'm 17 um how can i make money what can i do like uh, i need why was reselling right for you um well i i just love sort of what it is really i like working for myself obviously but i just quite like the community and everything yeah um i enjoy talking to people i've met loads of new people through this yeah. that i never thought i would meet and it's even like this like yeah, that, this, this all came I've, through discord and that's exactly. the thing that i think a lot of people underestimate is that you don't know who you're going to bump into in, in a discord like, i've met so many like people that like from all aspects of life people lawyers i've yeah. met and stuff like it's just so interesting like i've now got contacts in most industries yeah yeah that if i need to do people like i know people that have set work experience for yeah. each other for um, their yeah, jobs yeah and, and a lot of it because it, it all comes like for sort of like a shared either passion whether it be for sneakers or just a sort of a shared interest in making more money exactly. and when it's it sort of for me it's like the the 
a certain group of people will congregate in these groups and the ones that stay are the ones that are actually dedicated and motivated because you're going to get a lot of people who dip the toe in just to see what it looks yeah. like but the ones that stick around they all seem to be in a similar mindset and then everyone helps each other and they go on to do their own stuff like i know people that have developed um software the people that have started their own groups there's loads of stuff that's come so much, just yeah. from um like meeting each other in the discord yeah live like i don't think i would have pursued software as much as i have if it wasn't for this yeah, yeah. for reselling because it's given me so many opportunities i've spoken to so many talented people yeah who will give me help sort of for free yeah and it's yeah i think it's sort of changed my life really yeah so what um do you think if you hadn't have gone down the software route what do you think you'd be doing I don't really want to think about that. Um, <laughs> I would probably be um, some sort of business. I've always, I always know that I want to go into business. business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what route I would have taken into yeah, yeah. it, but something to do with that. Now you've got the software route. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, even both aspects from now earlier. And with like the reselling that you're doing um, and the, the sort of the scale you've got to, how much time are you dedicating now? Um, Purely to reselling, not to software. So into reselling, I, th I would probably go from my peak like maybe a few couple months ago i was five six hours a week i'd say yeah. obviously there's more of that is talking to people online and stuff yeah. but that's not I actual would, work no so whereas i was uh, working seven hours a day in my local coffee shop washing dishes um although i, I met friends and stuff there yeah. it just was boring it didn't make me much i was making six pound an hour yeah whereas now i can within a couple of minutes i can make 30 40 quid yeah exactly I, and that's it like People, for me, it's like they, they need to realise what, what potential and what opportunities in front of them. Like, let's say six pounds an hour, washing dishes, you're bored, or you can sit on Discord, you can be with your friends, and you can be, like, making more money with less time invested. Yeah, like, even, like, if me and my friends would be playing FIFA or something, yeah. I can, I'll have my laptop next to me, and I can still be buying shoes whilst playing a game. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's, it's the same, it'll be the exact same when, you, when you're back on Amazon, because how many clicks is it going to take for you to actually purchase a product, exactly, and then yeah. you sit back and wait? So all my all my friends, like, work at Waitrose or something, they're working late nights, working all day yeah. Sunday, they're probably working as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they make all right, but they're spending loads of their life doing that. Doing something. And that's the thing as well, because the difference here and this is probably like an interesting point to look on so what you're doing right now is actually going to benefit your future but unless someone wants to be a work be a, be stacking shelves in wages yeah. for the rest of the life them doing this job yes they'll get some transferable skills but it's not really to the same level of what as what yeah, yours like is doing we do all on my own i do like you've got to check your finances your yeah. stock all sorts of stuff you've got networking and this is the thing and this clients. is where like when, when people come to me you've been like oh i'm 16 I've managed to earn like 20,000. And I said like, you are going to go far because you, oh, yeah. you are like, the, and the, like, I've had like 16 years talk to me about cash flow. And I wouldn't have had a clue what that was at that age. Yeah. And like, and like literally saying like, um, oh, I'm doing this, this, this. And it's sort of those people like, and they're also saying like, um, I've not got, all, like, all my friends don't do anything like this. And like, it's sort of only me. And then for me, it's always like, my, my advice to them is just like, keep your head down because if you carry on on the path that you're on now like you're going to be flying by the time you're 20. Oh yeah that's um something that I want to do because it's it's setting me up really for when I leave home I'll have a lot of extra money and stuff yeah. um I've can continue it yeah and I've got all these life skills that I could put my CV like my friends obviously they've worked at Waitrose or what else are they going to do but yeah. they played on the football team whereas I've got so much to talk about yes. in this which is just so much better yeah. to an employer. And that's what like, which is what I said, um, I like my job was um, in merger and acquisition, super competitive to get into. It's like yeah. one of the most glamorous jobs to go into out of uni and finance. The only reason I got that job was because of reselling. Like yeah. literally like I mean, the partner's head like didn't have a clue. Like when he, when it, he was like, why? Like what, how does this work? And I was like, yeah, we do this, this, this. Like I've made this much. And he was just like, and then, but the, the interesting thing is, is in that interview, he said to me like, why haven't you took this further? Why haven't you started a business from it? So when I'd been there for a year and I was like, I told him that I'd, well, I actually I have started that business. I said, you planted the seed in my head in that interview. Yeah. And, like, and he was like, I wish I didn't fucking say anything <laughs> <laughs> because it's come full circle now and now I've left from it. And that's what like, it, yeah, because for me at the time it was right for me to go into that role. And that's what I'd always, that was always my goal. Yeah. But it was always right in front of me what I should be doing and what I would be making the most money doing and what I'd be enjoying the most yeah. and having the best lifestyle from. Um, and that's where like, I think people nowadays, you can actually look at something like this, like you can look at Amazon 
um, or, or you're reselling and or whether it be like you like building software for stuff and you can actually look to build a career out of that especially if you start young yeah. you don't have to go the traditional route of thinking oh I'm going to study for four years and then I'm going to pick something I don't really want to do but it'll no. pay me decent yeah um, because like you said you can be you can be chilling with your friends all day yeah chatting meeting new people and it's, living on your own clock there's nothing like it really no no other way to do this yeah so in terms of um, this sort of year obviously just in 2023 what do you want to get done this year uh, well I want to get ideally an apprenticeship yep. that's sort of well, even if I don't, I don't know how long I'll stick at it like long term but yep. I, I want to get something like that done um, I'd quite like to start off Amazon again yep. um, that's sort of my short term goal your big one yeah I'll be sure I'm sure I'm going to get that done because that's just such a good yeah. way to scale um, I think that's just what, enjoy what, my life really so, so you're talking now about getting your apprenticeship um, but then you also you, you'll still be open to doing Amazon on the side yeah why do you think so many people are happy just doing the one job and not doing something else on the side I don't know. I just don't think they know what they're missing, really. Um, until you sort of you start it, you don't know how good it is. Yeah. Like I've got, because obviously I know people that are in full time jobs. They're like thirty or something, yeah. and they're still making twenty grand a year yes. from reselling alone, which is just insane. Considering they've do their nine to five, come home, still have fun, live their life normally, but making that extra that extra money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And have you got any sort of goals that you want to get, like for you? with sort of like amazon what would be if you got like an uh would you scale it as far as you can and keep going or think, do you think that you will want to just get to a set point and then just let it tick over i think it sort of depends where i'm at in life at the time like if i've got a, a job um and i'm still making a comfortable amount where i know if i push it further it's going to affect me it's going to take too much time yeah i might be complacent and just stick where i am but if i know i can maybe even take it and make it full time like amazon or something i'm would definitely be able to that would you do amazon full-time even though because if your passion's in software um i think yes because i can still do software on the side like there's always people messaging me can you do this yeah there's always that demand even outside of reselling there's freelance work and stuff and has so when you're saying you get people messaging you has this all come from discord all discord yeah. and this is the thing where this is the power of discord and this is what a lot of people yeah. underestimate because discord like, like as we've already just said it's networking and you've and like like you said before all that the, the referrals for the, the software yeah. that you've made. Like you've made like a grand on a piece of software that took you five minutes to do and it all came through Discord. Yeah. Uh, this is just this, we've said this, I wonder if like, if you look like the whole NFT space that was on Discord, um, like there's us as resellers, like if you combined everything, I wonder how much money Discord has helped people oh, generate. It's insane. It would be horrific. It's ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. The amount of like, a small group of people like people I do brick flits with they just make so much money there's like 15 of us or something yeah yeah just because we're helping each other yeah and that's the best thing about the space is that most of the time people are open to helping yes um because I would I had no idea what I was doing I made losses on my first few shoes yeah yeah but I got the help from staff and these groups yeah. and, then, and and that's what like it goes back to the people that are in discord and the ones that stick around and also get involved in the community people see that you will they will be happy to help like everyone's always happy to help it's it's something that like i think people because i think the the, the one downside to discord is because it's for a lot of people that are just coming onto it it's not necessarily the nicest platform to look at and navigate around yeah i was so lost when i yeah. first started it and that immediately turns a lot of people off oh, to, yeah. the, to the idea of making money when i because i used to so the first group i was in that was based on if you had a slack yeah so i, I was those, slack yeah. based then came over to Discord. I remember like seeing roles, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. Like, and then, but then, so then I share everyone else's pain when they come on, because I was in that exact same position. But if you spend half an hour, you watch a tutorial, you you do a bit of digging, and you sit back and see how everyone else is using the platform, it becomes seamless. But a lot of people immediately like, panic. And like, no, no, get yeah, me off, get well, me off. especially I think people have noticed that now because all the groups I'm in that they've spent so much time trying to make it as user friendly as possible. Yeah. When I started, I I had cancelled my first group. Yeah, yeah. After a few days, I was like, I've made loss. Yeah. I can't do this. I don't know how to use it. Yeah. But I got I asked for help and I got help in there. Uh, yeah, here yeah. I am now. Like, yeah. Oh. And that's the thing. Like I, we talked about this before. One of our so he's now a staff member. Um, shout out Paul. He's re absolute beast. Like reselling. Like he throughout COVID and everything, he did horrific numbers in terms of profit. On his first day though, 
as soon as you land in Discord, he's not te- he's not good with technology. As soon as you come into Discord, probably like within the first day, he was trying to cancel, and I persuaded him to stay. And now he's like the probably the biggest animal in the group in terms of what he does numbers yeah. wise. And like like I said, he's got a job out of it. Um, but on his first day, he tried to cancel, and this is the thing where people get in your head like. Give it a go and actually try and be consistent and persistent with it. If it's not working at first, it doesn't mean it's not going to work. Like you said, like a couple of weeks down the line, um, because you could end up with a job from it. Like yeah, else. exactly. Or you could end up like he's a he's a train driver and gets really good money, but he's got a load of free time. And I'm sure, I could, like, don't quote me on something. I'm sure the numbers he's done, like he did, like an extra, I think it was seventy k in a year throughout COVID, it's, it's like throughout too. the COVID spell. And like that's where, like, if he would have left that day, seventy grand would have been left exactly, on the table yeah. and like think of the positive impact that then that's had on his life and had on his kid's life like that's what like the beauty of this is and if you find that it, if you stick at it until it works for you because it's such a proven model everything yeah. that we do there's so many people that make it work so it's just that if if it's not working i feel like it comes down to your own um unwillingness to learn and just stick at it because if you do the bare minimum at the with the methods that work like you're going to make money. It's oh, very yeah. hard not to. No, especially everything's sort of risk-free. It's, yes. Also, people don't understand is it sounds too good to be true. Yes. But it's not. Uh, exactly. And and as well, we had um one of the biggest complaints we're getting at the moment, like just on social media, like Food Review Club put a video up before with us and someone was commenting on it saying like, there's millions of people that advertise this. First of all, there's not. No, there's definitely yeah. not millions of people that are advertising Amazon like help. But they're like, oh, it's too saturated. No one would make any money. And this is the thing. This is what people need to understand. Right, let's think about Amazon. So they've got over 300 million products. The, the product list is, exp- uh, the the sort of range of products is ever expanding. Yeah. Now, Amazon can't have all of the stock, can they, for no. every single unit? That would be a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Like Amazon need us. But how do they how do they make sure that we sell through them? So that Because Amazon need their fees. They want to make that money. They need us to supply the stock um, so that they can generate fees. But how do they do that? It has to be an attractive offer for us, doesn't it? We have to be able to make profit on it because if we couldn't make profit on it, Amazon wouldn't have um, any any fees to generate because they wouldn't be able to sell anything. And then the whole concept wouldn't work. So the people that are saying like, oh, there's too many people on it. Well, it's bullshit because it has to work. Exactly. Because yeah. Amazon, wouldn't, Amazon the beast of a company that is, wouldn't work. And that's what, like, I feel it's the, it's the closed mindset of just, like, when people say, like, oh, it's too saturated, that allows them in their head to, as, like, it's like a justification to not give it a go. And because they can be like, oh, it's never going to work. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to push myself or get out of my comfort zone. And I think that's what probably 80% of people are like at the moment. Yeah, like, I thought at first, like, this is such a saturated model, but getting into it, there's so many products. Yeah. And that's, and that's it like when we do it we're getting out like 15 to 20 products every single day and these are different products yeah like and it's like it's not like traditional reselling where we're waiting on the same small portfolio to just keep restocking it's new it's new items every single day and if you think about it like shoes is there's such a niche customer base to buy on your shoes whereas amazon is everyone you could be selling anything and everything I, i'd never thought i'd be selling like air fries or patio heaters or something yeah but here i am yeah and it's did, making money did you see the um so did you see the nappy dispensers that you, the bot picked up that you yeah did? so they did were doing like i think it was it 40 or 60 quid a profit I think so like that, yeah yeah so they dropped from i think oh so i think the the seven on amazon i think it was um was it like 88 pound or something like that so, yeah. it was like 88 pound it dropped to like um maybe like maybe 20 something pound and then you made like 40 to 60 whatever it was that cut in the middle and like that's it like who would think that they were no, going to be exactly, selling that yeah. but that's the thing it's that with us we're not in the business of like with amazon not many people are in the business of focusing on one niche especially in groups like ours they're just in the business of making money and that yeah, means you'll buy that's anything what, that's, the, that's the mindset you need to go to yeah yeah, yeah. so i i thought i'd only be doing shoes but then i tried i think my first sort of low key flip was uh, was patio heaters and I got loads of them from Audi and I was selling them same day 40 quid profit yeah. like it's and that's what people delicious. need to like I think that's something that um, holds back a lot of people because like let's say they might be passionate about sneakers they just think yeah I'm just going f- like how on sneakers I'm not yeah. thinking about it but if you're if you actually 
think about what why you actually doing the sneakers in the first place like yeah you might you're passionate about maybe collecting them for yourself but it's the money and exactly, you can yeah. make more money in other fields and it's like the as soon as you sort of remove that restriction holding yourself back to one niche you open up the floodgates and you can be selling anything and everything and maybe making a hell of a lot more money oh, like yeah. because like you why like you can make let's say 60 quid on a nappy dispenser uh but 20 quid on pandas oh, so know. why would you carry on selling pandas yeah like it's it's but, but people still do that i i said i don't understand it's like my friends i show them my, my hallway was packed full of patios and like air fryers it's actually like a weird sight to see yeah. like they made fun of it like me yeah, for yeah. it but each unit's making me 40 50 quid yeah, yeah. like it's everything's do everything sells did you do um did you ride the, the hot tub wave no like so that was sort of when i first started reselling Got it. i didn't have the capital for it so i was i only went in with a few hundred quid which is more than enough to start but when one product is three four hundred pounds i couldn't divers yeah you no, can I can't diversify at the time one. whereas now i'm open to if it makes money i'll, I'll take it really yeah yeah but patio i know uh, hot tubs i saw making some serious yeah money. so we aftermarket started just the it was let's say if i think they maybe started picking up around about like may june and then yeah. we, uh, so i seen it happening and then we launched aftermarket in uh the in the august so we still got to ride it and then we got to do it the, again the next summer but like now it's just fucked isn't it there's no, no there's no demand it was that was definitely a covid driven oh covid there was so much stuff yeah. like so i covid was what started it to boredom like the first of us lockdown i had nothing to do mm -hmm. so i'd finished my school work in the first few hours and i just have all this time to kill like, i need to do something so that's yeah. where i and that's, that's where us as, us as a, a business exploded because everyone was in the same situation and like a lot of people who were working like say nine to five they'd had the furlough money coming in so yeah money to spend they wanted to still make more money but they couldn't let's say couldn't go and work the job no, exactly so they sat looking for ways to do it online we had PS5s around in that time. Yeah. We had, hot, we had all the garden furniture because everyone was just doing stuff in the garden. Like people were doing up the homes and, stuff yeah. the and, and then just being outside with the family in the garden. So it was like the perfect storm for, for someone to get into. And for us as a business, like it completely transformed like us. And I don't know, I don't necessarily know if we would be here now no, if it wasn't for COVID. I remember I first joined Alpha Market during the big console and stuff because I, I heard that they were like the the king of yeah, low key yeah. flips and stuff yeah, yeah. They had the best stuff so that's when that's when i first joined yeah yeah that's what I so, you guys were good so at. What, when was that oh i'm not sure actually i think i joined on like a five pound promotion deal or something oh yes yeah um, we did a black friday five pound it could have been that yeah, actually yeah. yeah but i just saw it was like they had there was so much stuff because the group i was in before I only really focused on sneakers and stuff yeah, yeah. which is fine for what i did but then i this sort of opened my eyes to yeah. what else can be done yeah yeah that we there was a time when like i remember i'd go through like the payout success channel and it would just be like wads of cash like because oh, everyone yeah. was just doing like ps5 at meets like everyone was taking cash like yeah and the amount of money that we must have got through like throughout covid that members generated was just horrific we did the numbers on it and that's what we've got on the like on the site we def we this was like we've not updated it for a while but i i know last time we checked it was over four million right and like that is so it, much it, more now yeah 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 for sure because that was it's not been updated in over a, probably around about nine months to a year so for us like i think we've helped people generate four million obviously not me no <laughs> i wish it was me but collectively across the community and like it's like that's where we get to see the the good side of reselling because like the ps5s even like the air fryers and stuff like that everyone fucking hates it and like we were just talking about it with the electric blankets so many people oh, saying it's so much stick yeah like for so for everyone listening we was we, we, we were talking about this so we put out a tiktok video um showing us going around aldi and reselling electric blankets and how we did x amount of profit in x amount of time then we get people saying like my children are freezing because of you <laughs> or like um people are dying because they're not warm because of and, and it's like you can't use us as a scapegoat for your situation. Like I've had people message me on eBay saying, oh, like, come on, my son's autistic. Give us his PS5 for like less than retail. Like, yeah, no, no, no. Why, no, no. why would no, I do that? Exactly. And it's the people give us so much shit. But when for like us, when we see the positives that come out of it, and that's how I deal with it now. And it doesn't affect me because at first it did. But now I, like, I'm bulletproof to it and I don't really care. I think it's funny. Like when people are just crying because it's just like, 
take some responsibility for yourself and, and do it. get it yourself or get out of bed and get there before us. Yeah. Or just join or, us. Or, yeah. yeah, join us. Or make make more money so that you're not having to complain. Like it's not yeah. like it's your people have to be accountable for their own circumstances at times. And people don't understand that we're just doing what big brands do. Exactly. We're like, just another step in the supply chain. If you could you well, if you had the wanted the amount, you could go to Tesco supplies for a or something and just buy it cheaper there. Like, yeah. There's always going to be a middleman. For and, it. and this is it, yeah, this is it, where it's like people are saying like, um, like people are complaining and um, some people are like stick up for us and obviously, but then it's like, because some people raise the point like, well, you can't be mad at these lot for selling it on Amazon because because you're not you're, being ma- you're not mad at Tesco for not selling it at cost price from Silent Night. Yeah. Like everyone's making the markup with no, just another yeah. step in the supply You're happy chain. to pay this price. People... Yeah. People complain at it, but you paid this price. You were happy to pay it. Yeah. But now you will realize that I actually bought it for hundred pounds. And this is what all the people that are complaining as well. This is what's funny. Everyone who's complaining when they're shopping on Amazon, they're feeding into this problem because they're yeah. shopping on Amazon anyway, but not realizing that someone else, they make, someone else is making money off that purchase. So they're already doing it like and, and supporting it like inadvertently. Like very few products on Amazon actually sold by Amazon themselves. Yeah, exactly. It's mostly people are exactly. And that's what people it. don't realize. It's, it's literally people like us that supply the majority of the stock for Amazon. Yeah. So the people that complain and say like, you're robbing us off. Well, then every purchase that you make on Amazon, you're being robbed off. Exactly. <laughs> it's facts, isn't it? Like, it's just, people just don't think. It's just like so like, yeah. small-minded. Yeah, just because we're showing it off they just now it's open their eyes that yeah this is how it actually is working and i think it also comes down to people like because we get so many it's like my like, i had so many people say because like, we put we made 700 pound yeah that's literally what we did and people like minus 699 pound fuel costs i was like why are you so petty like i don't drive a bugatti like, no. on, like i'm not it's not costing me 600 quid to go to a few hours no exactly like, and then people other people are like well you're forgetting about overheads um, taxes, all this stuff. Like, it's just like, shut up. We're just still like, making, we're making the money. money. Shut up. Like, we're doing something that you're not, and you're just looking to like put us down for it. Yeah. Like, because I had people like, uh, what about um, admin, electricity supplies, your internet costs to list on it? I was like, oh my God. Like, you are taking this so it's granular. Like, it's like saying, oh, I make 30 grand a year for my job. Well, how much are you actually keeping of that? Yeah, exactly. The taxes, your, your house. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's all right. So yeah. So that's like, yeah. Because it literally could be the point. Like yeah, you're making like thirty grand a year in your job, but you have to pay, let's say, a grand. No, no let's say five hundred quid in a mortgage payment that's next to your work. So it's like, oh, do you deduct that like yeah. from your from your earnings? People like because we're just doing something and like they see us making money and they, they probably don't want to believe it. No, they just do whatever they can to shit on it, and it's it's funny because we at the end of the day we're the ones that get to walk away with the money. In exactly. <laughs> Like um, but yeah, it's it is it's it's an interesting dynamic. But I don't, I don't, I think it comes back to just sort of maybe like a, um, I'm trying to think of the word. Like a, it's just a, a, a certain mindset where people just don't want to believe that there's the opportunity to do better. Yeah, they, they just like would rather sit in the nine to five and not have to think that there's someone doing more than them. Um, and and then when they see it, like they get triggered by it. But thank you to everyone that gets triggered because we've yeah. just done 2 million views on that video. So you are arguing in the comments. We've done it. numbers for yeah. us. And then you're going to generate us more business so more people are going to do it. Exactly. So you, well well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, you, you're adding, yeah, adding fuel to the fire. We want to cover now like the difference between sort of what we do and what you, you've been exposed to, sort of the reselling, the, the monthly membership model, let's say, yeah. versus the gurus that charge i don't know three grand five grand ten grand for a course they give you attention for 30 days and then fuck you off yeah so what have you ever firstly bought into any of them so not on that scale i bought like udemy courses and like how to sell on amazon things like that how to forex trade i Um, did trading for on udemy like it was just like cheap and i just wanted to know what it was um but i think people get quite scared of that it's because you see these people that flash the lambo lifestyle they're yep. not doing anything but that's not really how it is yeah um you're paying them thousands for a course up front that's basically all your capital one anyway but it's yep. the monthly model what, 40 quid maybe a month yeah for our arms it's 40 quid yeah well that's it's cancelled anytime yeah. you're not contracted to do it if you don't like it you stop and it's it's just such a low cost like, i just forget about my monthly yeah, exactly. like that. 
because when you're making the money, it's like it's it's just like it's like goes about saying. And so the 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 bot picked up. Was it when was it Ben that we tried to film? Yeah, something like I was like midweek. The bot picked up um, price drop. And it was like, um, I think this one was forty pound yeah. profit per unit, it's and someone unit. got, um, someone got like, I think it was maybe about eight units of it, and that's pretty much like that one drop alone. So they make forty quid profit, like eight by four, what's that? It's 30, 30, 320 quid. Yeah. Our yearly's three hundred and fifty quid. Yeah. So it's... people made like some that guy made three hundred twenty quid off one item in one day, and the yearly fee is three hundred fifty quid. Yeah, like. It's just one day you can yeah. pay off your year sometimes. Yeah. it's And I think with the the guru sort of bullshit model that stains our industry where people are charging like three grand for a course, a lot of them, they, they don't actually, it's not like us where they're giving you a, a products, they're not actually doing it. They'll teach you maybe how to source a product, yeah. but then you're out on your own. Exactly. Once you finish the course, they, they don't care anymore. Whereas with us, our, we literally have to give you the products and because if we don't, you wouldn't stay. Um, yeah. So it's sort of that. It's sort of like the people that sort of shun us and say mm, it's it's fake. Well, well, the business wouldn't run. It wouldn't be able to run if we didn't have people that stayed yeah. every single month. And that's where that I think people buy more. I, well, I don't actually know. This is probably an interesting point to talk about. Why do you think people fall for the traps of the gurus? Because I would never, even now, I would never pay three thousand pounds for for a course like on from from someone who. You can, cause I feel like you can tell yeah, when it's can, bullshit as well. But I, so for me, it's who is buying these and why. It's I think it's a lot of people my age. Yeah. Like I've had people message me, like friends, say, "Oh, I might buy. The, I might spend hundred pounds on this course." Like that's and that's quite that's on the low spectrum yeah, yeah. of it. Like it's just, just don't do it. Like they're not going to. I think the thing that's most overlooked in these monthly groups, like Art Market, is the support you get. Yeah, yeah. Like these gurus, you're never going to talk to them. If you no. talk to someone, it's going to be one of their assistants who doesn't actually know anything probably, about it. It'll probably be like a VA in the Philippines that he's paying yeah. fifty dollars a month for. Whereas, like, I've had issues with Amazon, like an order, I open a ticket, and within ten minutes, someone's already yeah. given me an answer. Exactly, and that's just so such a good thing to have. Yeah, um, which just people it's don't good. really realize. And the the sort of the I I do think, I, but I don't know why people fall into the trap. I don't know what, what 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 sort of person it is to just like believe it and like sort of just buy into it because I feel like us and maybe it's just because we've been around Discord so I think, long I think that's that we it. we're we're so aware of this and like we can we can smell the bullshit whereas oh, but then you see people like these a lot of these guys obviously are very rich from selling courses so they've got a lot of people yeah. buying into it they make their money from the course yeah like, yeah people... exactly like a lot of them don't actually even do. What, what they're, they're teaching, say, yeah, because and then that's easy. like the most like self defeating exercise, like pointless exercise in the world. Because it's if you on if you can't back it up with numbers, like Jake who runs our Amazon wholesale course, like one point two million in twelve months. Yeah, so yeah, the, but I bet you the guys that are teaching it, like a lot a lot of their stuff's either faked or they're not even doing it anymore. Especially like drop shipping and stuff. Like I've I think the only time I've sort of come close to sort of considering course is like trading. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen, this was sort of when I first started out trying to make money. Is I yeah. saw this these people making so much money, dream cars, dream lifestyle. Like, I want this. Have you seen? Um, do you follow uh, HS? Have you yeah. seen HS? Have you, are you in his Telegram? Uh, I've seen like clips of it and stuff. Oh, yeah. have you not seen what's happening with him? So he's basically now pushing um, trading, um, like getting people to trade with him. And but it's come out on TikTok. Like I, I started seeing it last night loads of people are exposing him like saying that they've lost money and he's coming in saying that every trade had been a win that day oh, and that, but they but then there's loads of people now that are coming out of social media that have lost money there was a guy saying that he paid 800 quid for um hs's um sort of like private members group and he thought it would have some benefit to it he paid the 800 quid and then there was literally nothing he still even though like so he, even though he was in this private chat where there was like let's say 100 other people it didn't get them anything it was just a small chat yeah and then and then like when hs was uh releasing the trading stuff or like he was uh reselling uh not he was doing an only fans course when he was doing that the people who paid for the private chat like didn't get it for free or anything or didn't get it like yeah. anything it was it was literally just like he's i don't even really want to say it but people are just accusing him of scamming all the time 
and it's that's that's where sort of like the trading and stuff it gets a bad rap doesn't it because oh, definitely. people just milk every penny they can out of it and don't really give a fuck what happens to people no that's it's just like it, it annoys me personally but i see yeah. people like saying oh i've just spent 150 pounds on this course i'm excited like you're gonna lose money on it yeah yeah there's there's a reason why he's driving in a Lambo and that's because you're falling for this. Yep. These, yeah, these yeah. tactics. And it's, we, we had, um, so we had a trader on, but he does, he doesn't sell cars or anything. It's just his own yeah, sort his own of thing. thing. Um, and he said that like, cause he was explaining how it works when like, let's say you, you, you sign, get signed up and then you deposit money with the broker. Then that yeah. person gets a payout and the people don't realize that as soon as like you've done that, like they're taking their money and then they, I think they've got to make. I think you've got to do like one or two trades before they they get their money. Yeah. So they'll be pushing these trades on you just so you actually start trading. But they don't care if you win or lose because win no. or lose they get their cut. Yeah. So it's it is it's a it's a horrible scheme, but people make a lot of money off it. I think the, the big trap as well is it's an upfront. It's a one time fee. Yeah. Whereas obviously, like aftermarket they need you to stay to make money yes, exactly. you're not going to make all your money off just one time people exactly. you need so to we actually have to have a customer service exactly like, because we if we we actually have to keep people yeah it worked out for we so and this is like one of the things now so the the market for us as a business has completely changed through facebook and instagram ads now it costs 66 pound to acquire a member wow. which is so that means that we have to keep someone for at least two months yeah to, to make any money. That's insane. So that means that we've got to have a level of customer service. If not, the business wouldn't be profitable. Whereas um, these, uh, these gurus just pay one time. Yeah, it's one time. You can't get your money back. Yeah, not bothered. Exactly. And they, because like you can even, because like, obviously you can, if they've got Trustpilot or whatever, or they've set up their own review page, you can just get them removed. Like it's not hard to do. No. So it's just like the, they, can, they can still make themselves look glamorous and immaculate online. Um, the, the only risk you've got now is the stuff like with the TikTok side of it when you get to like HS level where he's that famous and now he's pushing it on people people believe because they now, think he's trusted yeah and now there's that many people coming and he's just like what the fuck's going to happen to like his credibility there oh it's, uh, it's a joke that's yeah that's one thing I've always said to people like I've had people who I don't even like aren't my friends they say how do I make money yeah yeah they see I do it I just start selling shoes yeah, join yeah. one of these groups because it's risk free the only money you're going to lose is the the, the fee monthly membership fee and it, i can practically guarantee you're going to make that back first yeah that, and that's the thing because it's if you're actually just doing what we say and doing using like the information that we're giving you it's going to be very hard to not make that money back exactly it's it just comes out it's like we can give you everything and i say this with amazon all the time when we're taking calls we will give you absolutely everything but there's some level of personal responsibility yeah. that you've got to take because i can't order the items for you i no, can't exactly i can't pack them for you that's it but everything else all the the guesswork out of the game we remove yeah that's it's just so easy to start now i think from these sort of groups yeah but it's just it's something that i think is quite interesting though is that a lot more groups are popping up yeah and, so many now. and even like but like i remember like even with like let's say like in the reselling game there's i'd say there's four to four uh, no, I'd say there's four to five big groups in the UK. Yeah. Then, but then you'll see hundreds probably a year pop up that are really small, and they might last a week. They might yeah. last two weeks. But there's also that have standed the test of time, and will probably be around for as long as we want to be around for. Like as long as I want to keep aftermarket running, I don't see there not being enough members to keep it running. No. I don't think that will be the problem. It will. It will be just whether I want to carry on the business anymore, and I don't see myself in the foreseeable ever wanting that to change. Exactly. But like the the there's so many people that try it and underestimate what it actually takes, and because there's the big players in the space now that have this, we've got the the like the podcast, we've got marketing, we've got we've had enough money to come in so that we can sort of build the business and actually create a brand. That yeah. It's really difficult for the people with no money, like just starting up, like to start now, and that's where I think we got fortunate, especially with me. With, with COVID because we blew up in COVID. Yeah. So it was the perfect storm and I'm not naive to that whatsoever, but I was still in the right place at the right time. Like I'd put myself there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it, I don't know what will happen in terms of the Amazon side of it. We are seeing more groups come up. So I've seen so many 
Like, and and all the reselling groups are making an Amazon arm now, aren't they? Yeah, I've. Oh. We was one of the first to do that. Uh, I've noticed. Yeah, yeah, there weren't that many sort of around when you started. No. But now, like every big group has got an Amazon section. Yeah, now. yeah. but they're just not up to standard because no. they don't focus on it. No, no, no. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, it's it, it, you're right exactly. It's it sort of gets. They they put it there to satisfy people, and but yes, we provide it. They just can advertise it. They can advertise but, it. But and they have is, one person running it. It's yes. not going to be. Yeah, yeah, well, it's not, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be, and you're not going to be able to compete with like with like someone like ours. No, um, like ours or yeah, the the few other big groups, um, because there's people that actually take that side of it, the game very very fucking seriously, and you're never going to outcompete them. And what's funny as well, like we had a guy. Um, callers not so long ago who's like from twitter amazon twitter let's say yeah and he was saying like i've got the biggest amazon group in the uk blah 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 and then he told me his numbers and i was like oh no you're not no, the biggest yeah. amazon group in the uk uh and it's like there's so many people that like because that's the thing though but i didn't even really know about amazon twitter like it's sort of like sneaker twitter there's loads of groups there i'd, I'd, I'd sort of seen them but i didn't realize it how prevalent it was and i think that's where like when you go on to money twitter you can find so many other oh, things so like much, that. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you ever tried anything like trading then? Um, so during the first lockdown, I did like demo accounts because yeah. well, maybe my parents wouldn't really let me uh, just waste money <laughs> yeah. like that. Like I did Forex. I think my account was started 50 quid, just pretend it was real. Got up to like 400. Just so, And then I just blew it all in one, in yeah. one thing. You know, just, so I was a wake up call saying it's not this easy to do. Yeah. Like, I was just getting lucky. Um, but... I don't think I'll ever see myself going back to that just because it's too... Up in the air, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Especially like crypto, like I'm never touching, never going to touch crypto, in my oh, opinion. I'm in crypto. Like, if my crypto goes back to what it should go back to, I'll be a very happy boy. Yeah. But, but <laughs> right now, it's not so I've good. I've just... I always like to play safe. Yeah, yeah. Like, everything I do, I always try to make sure there's, like, a backup plan. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to waste my money because I know I haven't got another option not, really yeah yeah i've not got another job i sort of need to make sure i'm doing this right yeah so keep my wrist low so before we round it off it's been a great episode definitely yeah. loads of stuff that we've covered is there anything that you want to sort of leave the audience with anyone that's sort of your age oh. and you want to you want to motivate them whatever like if you've got any advice to give to someone your age that's looking for extra money what would it be i reckon you just do it like you've got to stop being around the bush and just yeah. commit to it like that's what I did at first. I just, I wasn't really that into it. But once I'd sort of realized what I can do yeah. and how I can do it, I went all in. And that's what I, so on that point as well, when, uh, so Craig, who does affiliate marketing for us, speaking to him and he literally said that um, he found himself every night watching how to make money on YouTube. That's exactly all I did, yeah. yeah. And then he realized that after a few months, of it, he's like, I've actually not done anything. Exactly, yeah. He's like, I feel like I know so much, but I've not, not actually started. And so it's like you said, it's just start, take the action and get going with it. That's the big, one of the biggest messages I want to do. And that's the whole aim of the podcast is to get people to do it. But hopefully seeing someone like yourself, people your age are going to, are going to want to do the same. I think one thing people need to sort of learn to do is to also help yes. like people let their egos get in the way. Yeah. Like I've spoken to some people who sort of like tried it that it's like, why didn't you also help? So I didn't really know how to. I yeah. didn't want to. Like, yeah. they're there for a reason. You pay for it. Yeah, like exactly. You... Yeah, we. But then that's it. We've got some guys that we'll we'll have the we'll, like for us. We'll have a phone call with them every single day, like, and we're happy to do that. Make like if you're paying for our service, milk is dry. Yeah, like, utilize like, for, it. Every, Maximize yeah. everything you can because that's, that's what they're there for. You pay yeah. for it. They want you to make money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We want, want them to, to see yeah. the success. We need the success channel to be full. Exactly. So, so <laughs> yeah. ask the questions, get started. And I just don't let people's like other judgment phase you because yeah. I think take it, well, leaving a job is quite an extreme thing, especially my age when you just know the way to make money. But you sort of need to work out, learn that it can be done. Yeah, yeah. Like you need to do what's best for you, really. Completely agree. Right. Perfect. Great podcast. Thank you. And it was uh, a pleasure having you on, mate. Cheers for having um, me. Yeah, no worries, no worries. And I'm looking forward to see what we do over the next six months. Hopefully, yeah, definitely. we get, we'll get some, some software stuff. development yeah. done. And we take aftermarket to new heights because we've needed a software developer. <laughs> I'm hoping Jed is going to be the answer. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We've got three more podcasts this week. So, a lot of content is coming. Make sure you subscribe. 
drop a comment below and like it. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. Right, and thank you. Catch you all soon.